quick um, introduction to uh, to what's going to be coming up next. It is an interview I did with Joshua Brian Fluke. Um, I've got to confess that when I did the interview, I honestly did not understand most of what um, he was talking about until after the interview. So, like, I, I didn't get what he was talking about. What he's presenting is a method of uh, structuring your statements of intent that he has found that is very uh, potent, that is very good at accelerating your effects and getting the... Um, uh, the, the energies that we're working with when we're calling on gods by their epithets and everything, really like getting that focused with, uh, with this method of developing your statement of intent in a structured way, sort of like uh, in a similar way that you would structure a haiku. This is a way of structuring your statement of intent based on a model called asymmetrical uh, chiastic uh, Chiastic asymmetry is what it's called. Chiastic asymmetry. And um, this is something you can actually Google. It's on Wikipedia, chias, uh, a key, what a chia, chias, chiastic is or chias, chiasm is. But anyway, he explains it in the, in the thing. It makes perfect sense once you understand that's what he's doing. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that that was clear. Without further ado, here we go. I will, uh, I will segue into, into that. Hi, welcome to another Applied Hermetics with Rufus Opus. I am Rufus Opus, and this evening I'm talking with Josh Brian Fluke, who is going to be speaking to us about, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, would, you, would you mind explaining how to pronounce what it is you're going to be talking about? Chiastic asymmetry. Chiastic asymmetry. Okay, and this is a, a way, a method of uh tapping into a way of resonating your statement of intent with a little bit added oomph uh by structuring it based on a uh literary device a how would you how would you say that like a um it's based on a natural pattern that kind of arises everywhere right and it is also a literary device that's one of the ways in which it it has arisen right okay all right well without further ado let's jump right into that asymmetry and a sorceress meta model um something that anybody from any tradition um can use it's very relatively um simple to understand and it's what i based a uh, year-long ritual um, that I did um, was entirely based on this concept of uh, of chiastic asymmetry, um, and what that is is a uh, literary device. Um, in its simplest terms, it would be three stanzas where you would have one statement a, a central statement which is the focus of all three. And a final statement, which is A sub 1, which is the opposite of the first one. Okay, so, so it kind of creates a circle around a central concept. So it's sort of like um, a poem or, a, or a, an essay kind of thing? Like a, so like a you'll, kinda... you see it all over the place. Um, actually, you'll find it in uh, biology, linguistics, um, pretty much any process that could be looked at as like a semiotic um, sort of process. Um, I, I was using Pierce's semiotic modeling, which is, um, well, I mean, it's not just Pierce, but it, it requires an action or influence, um, which involves a cooperation of three subjects. So you have subject, other, and the third thing is that which is seeking to be understood. And both of those other things need to kind of come together in their own relative way around this central idea. Um, so that's like the basics. One thing like Mary Douglas in her book gave a really wonderful example of it uh, from an old Cockney gardener that she knew when she was a child. Um, and this would be an A, B, C, where C is the central idea opposite B, opposite A. So it's five total statements that operate together as a whole. Um, and he was telling them about how to water plants. 
And he apparently just talked chiastically, like that was just the way his brain worked. So uh, he would say, uh, these young plants don't want too much water. That's A. Don't water them every day. That's B. C, which is your central message, what all of the rest rely on and orbit around, is water them every other day. Um, if you water them on Monday, do not on Tuesday, water them on Wednesday. And that is B sub 1. And then you have A sub 1, which is too much water isn't good for these young plants. Okay. So you... Uh, it's basically uh, almost a mnemonic device. There are a lot of different reasons that people say this comes up. Um, one of them was because for bardic performances, using chiastic asymmetry meant that if you memorize the first half, the second half is more easily memorable because it is an inversion. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also see it in, like, biology even with the, um, the chiastic complex in the eyes. That's how our brain works. It flippy flops the images and our brain twists it around so that we can perceive it. Um, same way with uh, bipedal motion. Bipedal motion is a result of, uh, of a chiastic asymmetry. Um, Left leg corresponds to movement of right arm. Right leg corresponds to movement of left okay. arm. Right. Um, so it's sort of as above, so sort of below. You've got very much, and you you'll actually see this process. Um, again, it's a semiotic process. You'll see it in uh, linguistic evolution, uh, which is really interesting because I personally think of uh, magic as a language of sorts, um, and it does have you know, some extra elements that perhaps some other types of language don't have, motion, scent, uh, things of that nature. But, uh, you know, when you find out that you can uh, model language development in the same way that you can um, model evolutionary uh, development, it, it starts to make things really kind of interesting. Um, one of the guys that I've been studying very, um, very heavily is a gentleman by the name of Pelkey, Leonard Pelkey. Um, he does a lot of work with uh, semiotic modeling in linguistics, biology, and culture. And it's really fascinating stuff when you start to realize that, like, this literary mechanism of the chiasmus has sort of sprung up as early as Proto-Indo-Europeans and sort of spread out into time was used very frequently, disappeared, wasn't used for quite a long time, would reappear in different cultures all over the world and all throughout time, cultures that didn't really have much relationship with one another. Um, so it's something that emerges in, out of multiple cultures uh, with or without direct transmission. So it's, all, yeah. it's, it's a reflection of something in our DNA. Um, yes, actually, I, I, read, I read a paper that laid out exactly when in the evolutionary sequence the uh, basically the brain bifurcated. And, you know, it made for this kind of dual lobed um, chiastic complex for the eyes, all of that sort of stuff. I am not a geneticist, so it did not make all that much sense to me. But they tracked down, like, actually when your brain started doing the different things that, um, that, uh, we, we see now in the, okay. All right, cool. Cool, cool. So, but then, so is, does it emerge, um, as a poetic device at all, or is it? Oh yeah. Like, um, it... you'll see it. Um, I've supplied you with some visual aids. Um, I used mostly stuff from the um, Old and maybe some of the New Testament. I knew I threw um, Noah in there, the Binding of Isaac, and I think the Book of Numbers maybe was the okay, other let's one. See here, I got, um, I got the Binding of Isaac. Let me make. Uh, here we go. Uh, 
Oh, it was it was Genesis. Uh, Genesis two was the other one. Okay, yeah, I've got um, the Binding of Isaac and the uh, uh, Genesis two. What was the other one here? But yeah, if you want to throw up the uh, the Genesis two, um, you can kind of see talking about it it sounds really really complicated to try to explain like a b c that's the central idea b sub one a sub one like it is really hard to explain mm -hmm. um but when you can see it represented in context um with the lines marked it's actually not too terribly difficult um Okay, let's see. Let me bring that one up there. Yeah, so, let me. There shows this book, by the way. Um, if you want to learn about chiastic asymmetry, um, this is the book that I would um, recommend. Mary Douglas, Thinking in Circles. Okay. Um, she's an anthropologist. My wife refers to her as the structure queen. Um, my my wife, um, her master's degree in anthropology. Um, so let me, let me get to the appropriate page. Okay, cool. Um, one of the cooler things that I don't think a lot of people are really familiar with, um, is that the Homeric epics, um, all have a, a chiastic asymmetry as their inherent structure. And it's a really unique chiastic asymmetry as well. I didn't um, know because that. it's a double ring. Um, it's actually... The, uh, the outer side of the ring is like the journey to, then you have an inner ring, which is like the war, and then the outer ring, which is going back. Um, and it's actually done, uh, the division is by day. Oh, Let me okay. see. It's, it's really interesting. That's something that like, I would be more than happy to come back some other time and talk mm -hmm. about. Yeah, you can that is that out. If we, entirely we, different that would be an uh, interesting graphic too because and and so just just sort of to like frame this in sort of sort of in a, a, a practical sort of way like uh, how, how does this turn into like this so you take the pattern and maybe i'm jumping ahead and tell me if i'm jumping too far ahead you take the pattern and then you apply it to to what to turn it into something that changes so things. what what I did, um, the ritual that I did, and I'll, I'll tell you about it, I'm not going to provide it um, because the way I do things is crazy. <laughs> you? Um, <laughs> no. And no, it really is. Um, and I just, people shouldn't do it hmm. my way. Okay. Like, my brain is broken. <laughs> it works great. If you're willing to pay the price of it working essentially um it's quite mean um so anyway what happened was i was miserable absolutely uncompromisingly suicidally miserable mm -hmm. and i kept doing divinations to be like what can i do what can i do and it was like nothing 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 and i was like so what is it going to be like this forever and they were like yep and I was like, well, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, not, that's not a happy reading. Yeah, no. So I, I was like, well, fuck that. Um, you know, if this universe doesn't work out for me, I'll find my way to a different universe with blackjack and hookers. Right. You know? As one does, <laughs> yes. Um, it so is, it I, is the logical conclusion. So basically, in, in terms of utilizing chiastic asymmetry in a ritual context, you really have two choices. Um, you can go with the A, B, A, or like an odd chiasm, so a three a three parter, or you could go with an A, B, B, A, okay. uh, which is an even chiasm, and they do very different things. Um, I have been working a lot with uh, like looking at Chumbly's work as well as Peter Hamilton Giles and his work with because I have epilepsy, right? Which means that my sense vehicle is not reliable. Right. I can't 
I can't trust what my senses tell me for a variety of different reasons. Um, like my emotions, I'm always angry, mm -hmm. um, like all the time. Great. And that's just because of my medication. That's like something that it does is just makes me mad all the time. And I started figuring out that like, I'm not actually mad. My body's telling me I'm mad, but I, I'm not though. And once I kind of hit that hurdle, it was like, why should I trust anything that my body tells me? Like I taught it to tell me these things. You know what I mean? Like mm. by and large, our emotions are programmed by us when we don't know any better. Um, right. Like the unconscious. Yeah. And, and we wind up teaching ourselves to react in very specific ways. Unfortunately for me, my reactions are random mm -hmm. um, at times and they don't make any sense. So I kind of came to the conclusion that since I couldn't rely on myself, I would rely on everything else to push back on me and show me what I was. Okay, so you know sort of what like I mean? sonar, like, like you're pinging out everything else to sort of get a sense of who you are by, by understanding what you're not. Yes, but also you, you have to give the other its own element of intelligence and understanding as well. Um, like everything that isn't me seems to react intelligently when I communicate with it. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Like the, okay. Yep. So like, you know there, what I mean? There's like that, which is that, which is the idea of the self and that, which is the idea of the not self. Yeah. But if you just address it, by the way, it will talk. Yeah, totally. I've, I've yeah, it, 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 yeah. it talks back. Yeah. Right. And if, so if, if you talk to anything and you treat it like it's going to answer, it's amazing. The stones themselves will rise up and worship if, <laughs> if the people is don't. True. So, yeah. Absolutely. So I was at, at that time um, doing Jack Grail's Hikate course, which is very good, by the mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Tremendous yeah. stuff. No, Everything no, no, no. Jack does is wonderful. Mm. Um, and I actually, we got to talking about Hikate Azostos, which is like the boundless one. And my brain just got stuck. And it was like that you're here now. <laughs> this is what we're doing now. That's, the, that's a fun one to figure out. Is that the unchained one? The one, the unbound? Yes. Uh, the boundless or, uh, unbounded one. Yes. And so I really started doing some meditation and giving that idea some consideration and like, what would, what would the conditions for boundlessness be actually? Mm -hmm. um, and what I kind of came up with is the only thing that something could be truly boundless is like, let's say this is all of our reality right here. Mm -hmm. Everything that could, oh, wait, here, oh, can we see that? Yeah. Awesome. Circle. Ever, everything that could happen ever, all time, all space, is all contained in this circle. Okay. Anything within this circle is going to have a boundary. All right. The circle itself is the edge for everything we will ever experience, but there's something beyond it. Okay. And we can't ever reach that hence boundless one um that was the conclusion that i came to and it looked like it was really strange when i was meditating it was because it was just like this ball of black snakes um that were that were all kind of coiled around one another and just this swirling mass and you know we were inside of that that was everything that existed and the the boundless nature of of azostos of that perhaps aspect of hikate that was how my brain uh reckoned with it i suppose um so i sort of based the ritual off of that and used the structure of chiastic asymmetry to basically create a destruction funnel 
Um, As one does. That that wasn't my original intent. Um, what I was originally intending, what I was trying to do, was move between worlds. Like, if this world sucks, I'm going to go to a different one. Mm -hmm. um, and I figured... That having the boundless... Be, yeah, the, it's like removing the obstacles and getting her to open the gateway and be the key bearer to, to get you through to the next universe, sort of. And and so I, I actually did. You you actually had the opportunity to read it. You're one of I think three people who have the opening ritual and the ritual itself. Um, I did not give both of those to many people. Mm. Um, again, because I wouldn't advise doing it. I only gave it to people to uh, look at and be like, does this make sense to you? Does this seem sensible? Um, everybody seemed to think that it did. But I started the ritual. Um, I actually gave you the uh, a picture of the altar um, that I used, and that altar remained pretty much right there uh, for a whole year. Uh, the table got moved around a bit, but... Hang on just a second. I'm going to show it to the audience here. Oh, excellent. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the, the altar. Okay. All right. It got a couple of upgrades um, over the course of the year. I did wind up getting a much larger um, obsidian sphere that I felt was, was more appropriate. Um, but by and large, that's that's what it looked like. And um, the ritual itself took about 20 minutes to do. The opening ritual, maybe five minutes. Um, but I was doing it many times a day uh, mm -hmm. for a year. And uh, the basis behind it was um, because I used uh, Hecate as sort of a triune uh, goddess, you know, in, in a lot of different ways um i divided it into three sets of three stanzas mm -hmm. and the top row was uh beginning in the underworld was the top three uh you move into the center with the middle three with the middle line being the central point of the ritual itself um, and then you had the overworld and sort of more Empyrean aspects of Hecate at the bottom. And what I was thinking <laughs> was going to happen was hopefully that it would kind of just nudge me over to where everything would, like, be okay. Mm -hmm. That is not what happened. Uh, so what, well, I mean, it, it it is it is what happened, um, but it was much much more severe than than I had at first initially anticipated. Less nudgy and more flying. More than... slicey, getting yeah. tossed into a meat grinder kind of a sensation. Yeah, she can um, be, she can be a little... <laughs> So do you did you did you weave different epithets into that structured? So basically, what you're describing is a statement of intent, right? Like, in, in a way, you're you're chanting or or you're meditating on and you're contemplating while you're saying the prayers that you you put together, that are in in a literary device that follows this pattern that you've described, the A A B A or A B B A, depending on how complicated you want to build this this stochastic or I'm sorry, this. Uh, Chiastic? Is Chiastic. It? Chiastic. You know, for the longest time, I was saying it wrong. Like, I forget how I was saying it, but I was saying it totally wrong. And um, I realized maybe six months into doing this research, because, you know, like, you see something in a book, hmm. and... You never say it. You never know how to say your, it. Your brain decides how it sounds, and right. that's just how yeah. it sounds, and that's how you say it until you realize you're wrong. Right. <laughs> and then years later, you're still saying it wrong, and you're like, God damn it. So, so this is oh, the way the structure was lined up. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. So we have... Where's my pen? There we go. Each stanza is five verses. One, two, three, four, five. Central point would be linked to the beginning and ending with two and four 
acting as kind of a magnifying device, okay. sort of. Um, so these. Oh, so it's like the lens. It's it's just like a lens inside the eye. Yeah, that it's yeah, it is. Um, so you actually have a couple of different relationships, obviously, um, within just the individual stanzas themselves, mm -hmm. and that you can code time into this. Um, because I because I started it on the dark moon. Um, did it again? Well, I mean, I did it like every day, but it got special performances on the dark moon, full moon, dark moon every month for a year. Um, things would happen on the full moon like clockwork. Like what Anything kind of things? that I was waiting on, boom, 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 full moon every so, time. Like at the dark moon, would you do something like a dive moon where you wrote out a petition and planted it somewhere with your offerings, or was it no? Um. Really, I myself was the offering, um, okay. and so like, let me just tell you about some of the super weird stuff that happened to me. The thing that actually like legitimately frightened me um, was about I don't know, maybe a week, maybe less after the first performance of the ritual. Um, I went to my wife's work to pick up something for her. And I knew everyone that my wife worked with. Um, I had seen them a bunch of times. Like, we bought a car from Karen, the lady who worked there. And she's very nice. And I had met her on several occasions. And I went to uh, my wife's office. And there was a lady behind the office. And I was like, oh, who's that? Like, who's that? Didn't recognize her. So I pull in. And she immediately recognizes me. She's like, oh, hey, Josh, how are you? And I was like, uh, hi. Great to see you. That was Karen, dude. Like, and it was a totally different person. Hmm. Like, I remembered her as being my height, slightly overweight and blonde. Um, that was who that person had been to me on several different occasions. Um, and this, she was not that, and that was very disturbing <laughs> to me. Yeah, like, like, so you're talking about, like, regular characters in the, in their daily plot just sort of swapped out. That they got recast, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, recast, okay. you know? Um, another one that I remember very distinctly, like, I almost had to pull the car over when this happened, um, there's this band that I really love called Mischief Brew. And um, I have listened to all of their albums and heard every version of their songs like a million times. One of my all-time favorite bands. And I was listening to Spotify while I was... I think it was while I was actually preparing for the ritual. I, I listened to a lot of punk rock music Um before I do magic most of the time. Yeah, um, because you have epilepsy. That's, that's definitely the way to do it. <laughs> should be really get some strobe lights going too while you're at it. <laughs> but, uh, but like yeah, 30 no, hertz, I... Uh, 30 hertz, I think, is what you're really aiming for. <laughs> that actually doesn't affect me at all. Oh, good. Uh, good, good, good. The flashy good lights. Not at all. Um, but uh, I remember hearing a song by Mischief Brew, and it was the album version, okay? Like, it was the album version. There's no way I would not have heard this song because I listened to that album a hundred times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was one of my rainy day, I feel bad right, right. albums. Yeah. Um, and there was this one part in it where, in the way that I remembered that he did it, it was just him saying, la da 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 That was it. Mm-hmm. In this version, it was like a whole bunch of people. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you know that it, you know the banana song. Yeah. There's an extra note in that from from the way I learned it. Like, I I know it one way, but after like just a series of initiations and experiences, 
it changed and I, I have had something very similar happen to that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to pr- pretend like what you're doing is, or talking about is completely crazy, but I've seen, I haven't seen anything quite that to that level that you're describing, but I do know what you're talking about. Like, like it, it's like, um, like what, what is that one phenomenon called with where like the Berenstein bears and all that? Oh, the Mandela effect. Yeah. The Mandela effect. Right. So there, there's that, those are like the real famous obvious ones, but in my personal life, shit that only like so like my sister remembers shit completely differently than i do you know at events that we were at you know Mm -hmm. like i remember my cousins being in certain places and some were upstairs and some were downstairs and she remembers it completely different you know but the way she describes it it's the right cousin but like you said you know swapping out the the and similar similar to that you know just like weird it's almost like it's almost like the universe is gaslighting you a little bit yeah uh, you know, I, I actually called several people that I trust <laughs> uh, who are more experienced than me uh, the day after that happened and was like, listen, <laughs> I need to ask you something. I need you to be completely honest with me because I need to make sure I'm not like that. I don't need to be seeking help right now. Right. It, or, or you probably do. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you're getting help regardless. But <laughs> Yes. Um, but, um, you know, when I explained the situation, they were, they all kind of said what I was feeling, which was like, listen, do you feel like, are you suicidal right now? And I was like, surprisingly, no. For the first time in a long time. (laughs) No, not really. They're like, are you thinking about hurting yourself or anybody else? And I was like, Nazis? (laughs) <laughs> um they're like that's fine that's fine yeah, you can, um, it's, it's still okay to punch a nazi so. <laughs> so you know after talking one of them um and god bless his heart was very very concerned he could tell that i was was having a time um and then he was like do you have anybody else that you can talk to and i was like yes i have my wife you know like and if it hadn't been for my wife, I would have just completely crashed and burned in in this whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a- as magicians, I think we we like to mitigate the effect of our environment on our success um, to a certain degree. But uh, you know, if it if it hadn't been for my wife and for the fact that she was really there, just like kind of guiding me through the rockiest times, Absolutely. I. I would have absolutely like crashed the ship, no question. Yeah. yeah, my my life has been like the last two years I've been with her. I've just been it's I've been able to rebuild because of her because like like just being there to to be my constant companion and and the framework and the just if nothing else a regulated day you know <laughs> sometimes just just having to get up in the morning because you have somebody making sure that you have to get up in the morning is right it gets you out of bed when you don't really feel like it so it's it's uh yeah both the direct and obvious ways and the indirect and yeah but yeah so the other other fun things that just randomly happened to me throughout that year I wound up visiting my cousin in Hollywood and writing a movie, 90 page screenplay in 30 hours. Oh, no, is just... that the one that you shared with me too? Yeah. That yeah. was a bad ass too. Dude. That was, that was amazing. I, I really, I hope that that one gets, gets done at some point. That was awesome. Yes. Johnny five and the Riff Raff versus God is one of my yeah, more favorite I scripts. Think, I think that was, that's something that definitely deserves some screen time. But, uh, you know, I went to Hollywood. I spent a week out there, um, actually got professional readings with professional actors, and we had a blast. I remember um, that, and it was like, and you were like, you were like le- living on the bleeding edge for a minute there, weren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The I mean, dude, the edge. Like, the, the bleeding, very edge. The, the so, bloody bleeding <laughs> What, what I actually asked for, and you'll have a good laugh at this, um, what I, well, I spoke with them like the, the otherness, I guess, for lack of a better term, um, that showed up and kind of stuck around. And, um, you know, I basically told them, like, I'm willing to do, like, whatever it takes mm-hmm. to survive. Like, let's do... Can we do 15 years of advancement in a year? <laughs> Whatever it takes. I, as long as nobody gets hurt, right? 
<laughs> I didn't even give that stipulation. I oh, should have. Man. I did not. Um, but yeah, no, we, we came to the conclusion that uh, 15 years in a year uh, was what was going to be happening. And I, I remember asking them, like, you think I'll make it? And they were like, mm. we'll see. So it had your hair? Uh, no, I actually, <laughs> man, you know, like, I've been going gray since I was, like, 11 years old. Oh, okay. You're one of those um, Doctor Strange kind of guys with the... I the, guess. The Reed Richards at, <laughs> at age 26. <laughs> it's always been about this color, like, for yeah. as long as I can remember. Oh. Um, but, yeah, no, after, after I got home from Hollywood... I was going to, I was starting to look for a job and I wound up going to South Dakota to work with a charity in South Dakota for a month. Um, and that was a really weird thing because I joined, it's called uh, earth bag construction is what we're doing out there because normal construction just gets destroyed by the wind in, in no time. Um, and earth bags are very, very wind resistant, really good for that kind of thing. And I was wanting to learn about that, so I joined a Facebook group. And the very first post um, that I saw when I joined was like, "Come out to South Dakota, like yeah, I remember Earth thinking, Bud Reservation, you, like you, learn Earth bags." And I was like, "Oh crap! Like that dude's going out to like those are my peeps, anyways. Like those are my peeps anyway on Rosebud." So I forgot to like save it and i wound up having to like go back and like pour through this page for like a half an hour to find it and uh just called him and was like hey listen man you know my name's josh uh i've been sun dancing for a long time you know i'm at i'm at your disposal man like what are we gonna do and uh i wound up going to pick him up from north carolina drove him out to South Dakota so that he could get the project started. And then I went out and joined him a week later. Um, and we were out there, man, like no electricity, hmm. no water. I was living in a two man tent. It was awesome. I, like, yeah, that's so good. So good. Building shit out of, out of the dirt itself. <laughs> Ra oh man. Raising, raising the earth with your mind. <laughs> And your bare hands. <laughs> it was an amazing time. Um, we, we really did have an absolute blast. And, uh, See, you know, I can't... That's, that's the kind of manifestation magic that, like, it's hard to put into words. I spent a year on a yeah. commune, you know, in, in Bastard, Texas. And it was this 900-acre fucking farm. And we, we worked our asses off. But there was so much that we got done. And there was always something new to do. And it was like creating out of out of the invisible. And we were always, we did like straw bale hay houses that with the weird coating on it. And that didn't really yeah. work. And we found some old uh, 1800s uh, uh, log cabins that we tore apart and put back together on the farm. It was like nice. Legos from, it was, yeah. So, I mean, it was, yeah. But, I mean, there there's something to that materialization thing that, that puts you in touch with the elemental kings you know if you will <laughs> that, that it's hard to put it into words have you ever done anything with like Cobb or, or any of the Cobb kind of that that is exactly what earthbag building oh, okay. is All actually right. um so yeah when when you were talking about the hay bales I was like yeah no that's 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 oh, okay. it that's, that's yeah yeah is. so Cobb is uh there's this uh if if everything goes my way there's a there's like a 300 acre place with um a already built cob house that, that i don't have to fucking build the fucking thing i think that'd yeah. be great so i i would love that and that's like you know they've got like a 40 foot dirt berm behind it and this so it's like it's like all the, just like you see in the videos on the youtube so i'm like hey and it's incredibly affordable because nobody wants one. Because nobody wants to be there. Yeah, and we're like, we're like, you know, this is climate change. Seattle is not going to be the land of the forty percent uh, rain, you know, forever. This is going to be dry, and everything that the cob is there for is going to be there for even better, you know. <laughs> so I'm just like, I think that's that's going to be the way to go, especially with all the climate change going on. Yeah. No. I mean. It was uh, 
definitely a time out there. And I remember, like, the day that I left, I was going to bring all my ritual items with me. Um, and again, that, like, the otherness that was present was just like, nope, that doesn't go with you. Like, that stays here. Like, that doesn't belong on their, like, land. Hmm. Like, that's not there for them. This is here for you. Don't go mixing things up, son. Like, <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so I kind of, I kind of just went back to my, my roots a little bit for that month and, uh, did a lot of sweats and, you know, smoked a Chinupa, had smoked some <laughs> marijuana with the Sundance chief a bunch of times. Like, man, those Lakota boys, dang, hmm. like they smoked me under the table, Wow, just yeah. all the way under, um, serious business. Um, but I got back home from that, and I really um, picked up with the ritual again. And, I mean, throughout that whole thing, my day-to-day -day life was honestly, if you could imagine your worst fears manifesting at you once an hour at the minimum until it wasn't a fear anymore that was what my life was so um so all right let, let's recap you you did a series you put together a ritual based on on the chiastic asymmetry asymmetry method based on the names of hecate the epithets of hecate and based on on the descriptions and the method that you use it created uh, an implosion event if you will in your life that, that was basically resetting things to a degree that released you from the patterns that had left you in toxic patterns and toxic experiences and traumatic experiences to the point where you didn't even recognize some of the, the daily characters in your life. Like, it shifted reality in such a way that, that the way you experienced it was completely different. But yeah. it left you without that constant... Um, uh, not anger. You're still angry, right? But not. Well, I can't help that. But, but you know, it's it's not necessarily about what you feel. I think as much as how you act on those feelings, mm -hmm. um, and and what you allow those feelings to like, yeah, to do. Like, how do you? But you found a way to make a positive, like you feel more positivity in life instead of just the the depressive, uh, suicidal. Uh, self-harm stuff like you got out of that ideation and into and i mean you know to be honest by the point i was starting the ritual i was not even suicidal anymore i was just pissed off okay uh, <laughs> well, that's good you know, i mean i'm just kind of pissed well off. that's that's a good much better place to be Yes. Oh, definitely. I, yeah. I, no. When you're when you're not like mad at the world and ready to end it yourself, you're mad at the world and ready to end the world. That's a, that's a, a much better place to be. And you know, man, like another thing that that's just very interesting was throughout that whole year, like again, another thing that had somewhat precipitated um, this event was my wife and I were trying to get a house, uh -huh. and when when we first went to get our loan, they nearly laughed at us. You know what I mean? Like, oh, honey, no, no, you're not getting a loan of any kind. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that. Thanks for But trying. you know, in the nice way that bank tellers can tell you like, just nah, not happening. And you know, in that year, it was maybe six months after seven months after um we actually found the kind of perfect house that i am living in now it's on three acres we have a fruit nice. orchard grapevines and kitties is that where you're growing your uh, mushrooms uh yes mm -hmm. yes um i i haven't started my mushrooms yet this year i have been lazy <laughs> i have like lion's manes and a bunch of different types of oysters that like need to be put into substrate but there's been a lot going on oh also um i wound up getting a job now this year things seem to be happening in june for me now like that's a very like that is apparently when 
I got married. I got married in June, so I, I feel like that's like a good month for me too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah no uh, got a great job that's gonna be more than paying my bills and you know the the whole thing worked out gangbusters on the long you know what I mean mm -hmm. like on the long right. view. It was, yeah. it was really difficult. See, I, and, I I think I think these implosion rights are are really fucking important to magicians. I. I think that the getting that energy up is necessary to get you out of those cycles of uh, self-destruction, you know? I, I think that that's really how you get your whole life turned around, is by evoking, like for at least for some of us anyway, at least for me. All right, speaking for myself. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I know for me as well, um, obviously. Um, another really funny side note, um, I had a friend, a, a close friend, who, like, kind of observed me through the first few months and was like, I need to do that, too. <laughs> and there, so... Yeah, so the Seven Spheres stuff that I was famous for for a bit was... It, it does that, right? And it just it blows out all the negative shit that's related to every sphere. And as, and as that manifests in your life, it's crap hole. <laughs> it's like everything goes to crap. And then I was so like, bad. I'm like, there people are like, this, when does it get better? I'm like, this is it. This is, it's getting better right now. It's, get, it's happening <laughs> this is, right now. Yeah. That's like, what's happening. Like, why didn't you say so? I was like, yeah, well, I mean, I did kind of, I told you, you got to be ready for everything to go away that you don't need anymore. You know? Yeah. If everything well, I mean, bad the, for you disappears. It's like, however, you're not yourself. Right. Exactly. You know? it, 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 that is such a great way to put it, right? It's however you're not yourself. It disappears because it's, it, it, you're able to become more yourself. And all the people who don't like you, they don't like you because they're not part of, of you, right? They're not supposed to like you. It's okay, <laughs> right? They, yeah, right. They're supposed to like someone else. Right. It's part of somebody else's story. It's cool. Yeah, no, it's great to be kind of free from all that stuff. So but, I, uh... I, 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 Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I really, I think that, um, like, uh, I just wanted to take a note here that when we go back and do editing and stuff, I want to make sure that in the intro we, we kind of mention that that's sort of like the, the what, what, what this does is how it creates that impulsive event. and Or at least it, it creates a container in, into which, an alembic into which the prima materia can be condensed and concentrated and heated and... Well, and so, like, the ritual that I made is just a proof of concept that chiastic asymmetry works. Like, I will stand by that. Mm -hmm. Like, as a ritual construct, it works. Right. And like, what you mean by that is it focuses the intent, the energies that are manifested through a statement of intent when you conjure spirits in whatever system you work with, when you put that statement of intent into the format that you described... That's when it supercharges it with this. Uh, it's it's like a magnifying glass that bounces the light through the lenses in the right way, so it's projected onto the screen more intensely. And so, it's a condensing mirror. For me, what it really felt like throughout the whole process was just pieces of me getting just hacked off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just. Yeah. There was very little mercy involved with the hacking either. And that's um, that's important. That's very It was important. responsive, like, to my needs. I will say that. That if I was like, listen, too much. Mm -hmm. Too much. We need to find a different way of communicating with each other. Because whatever you are trying to tell me, I don't understand. Because I am a dum-dum. So, like, please tell me a different way. <laughs> when you talk about this otherness, right, that we talked about, like, so I see the, the Goetia and the Archangels and the Planetary Governors and all that as different aspects of the other that we interact with, a lens through which the other focuses itself to interact with me in that moment in the way that I need it to be there and that it can, it can meet my needs and I can meet its needs right so it's like that temporary 
temporary individuated existence, right? Is that sort of like, do you see, is that sort of like what you're talking about? So it's like, sort of like animism, like the tree in front of me has a spirit and I know it's, I can be no. talking to it. Or... It's inherently diffuse. Um, so like it, it isn't anything. Okay. But it is everything. Um, so like if you look at like the Tao Te Ching, um, where it says like uh, the, the Tao that can be named or is not the eternal name. Right. Um, because naming is the origin of all particular things, I think, or something to, to that extent. Um, what Whatever this particular methodology hit on, and I don't know if it will be this way for everyone or if it was just this way uh, for me and for this particular ritual. Please experiment. Have fun. Um, it was very diffuse. It never... I could see it on a timeline. You know what I mean? If I if I looked back over a span of a month or so, I could kind of put a... F it's so difficult to like to talk about. It felt a very certain way when it moved. I guess is is the best way that that I could put it is that there there was a very specific dread is not the right type of word. But like coming to the tippy top of a roller coaster and you're looking like right over the edge. It's Picard. Like that. Yeah. Picard had the, the, the fear of God that is a, a, the awe inspired moment of terrifying. This moment is real for real and it's about to be really shitty. <laughs> it's about to be really real. Like in ways that I have not experienced realness before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the things my therapist has always joked with me about is like, you, you know, if you ever really were fully aware, you'd be so scared you wouldn't know what to do with yourself. I'm like, you know what? I've been fully aware. I was fine. I lived. But he might be on something. But yeah, let me... Ugh. So the ritual itself... We'll go over that really quick because we are definitely running out of time. Alrighty, yeah. So how would that look? Alright, so nine stanzas, right? Okay. Five, that is the central point. That's the point of union. That's where you want your... Your statement of intent. Your, your statement of intent to be, yes. Now, you want to surround it by complementary powers. So like, let's say you wanted to do an A, B, B, A, uh, chiasm, right? Okay. Instead of one of these where you get like pulled down into that singularity and completely turned into nothingness and then popped out the other side and you kind of just get thrown back together until you're in one piece again. That's like what this does. It's a very violent process. Um, this one, on the other hand, if you just do one verse like this, you would want to link it like that, most likely. And maybe a two to four. But you would use these to kind of build, right? Like, statement one is your statement of opening, right? Like, what is this thing? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's uh, the, the deity associated with, with four? Is that uh, Hermes? Uh, I think it's Jupiter, isn't it? Jupiter, Jupiter. Okay, so that's great. You know all about that guy. I've heard about him. So we say, like, oh, mighty Jove, you rock and roll. Yeah, this mighty ball is in your thrall. And so then we know down here, we would want to say, like, and rock and roll is Mighty Jove. There we go. Right? We would use these two here to do a, sort of a linkage that is a build, right? So let's say, like, I'll rock... and roll all day mm -hmm. and 
at the bottom. Sweet Susie. Lightning's going to rock you tonight. <laughs> and so you have and this is this is about as simple as you could go with it right like you've got your power that you're using you have your ending down here and they should represent one another inversely and then you've got your stuff in the middle and the stuff in the middle at that point, it's just an informational meta model. Okay. You can make any kind of relations in these two sentences that you want. Right. You can and, make... and you can build as much complexity into those. So you can do like a one. Can you hold that back up for a second? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So, if you, right. if, so could you do like a. Uh, so you've got as long as your one and your four and your two and your three are inter or, or internally reflexive. You could also do your one and your two could weave each other together and your three oh, and your four, right? Like as you have it diagrammed and then, yeah. And your one and your three. Yeah. And you could you could just continue to weave that through as you, as you continue on. Right. Yeah. And so if you wanted to make it another it's like stanza, puns. it's like puns. You can have in <laughs> unlimited infinite puns. Yes. It. It really is, man. It's like, it's... So what you would want to do here is use this concept as an inversion of this concept and say, like, Jove is, Jove is fallen with the lightning, right? And that means one and one here already are contrasting so that's good mm -hmm. um and then we could go like let's say lightning crashes the night is silent hmm. a new mother cry oh And the emptiness shatters the silent night. Pretty sure this is a song from the 90s. Probably. Lightning crashes. Well, that one, yeah. I was actually listening to a bunch of 90s music just a couple of days ago. It so, like, it's, the it's in us. there. It's close. Yeah. Um, and then the last one would be... As the lightning returns to the sky... Jove returns with it. Okay. And then you have this kind of day and night, this active and this quiet, um, kind of balancing off of each other. And if you wanted to get slightly more complicated, I'm not actually going to do this um, because I don't feel like it and my brain hurts. Mm -hmm. um, but you could do a third one. I would actually use this as the last stanza and then put in a middle one there and use that center stanza just for like epithets of Jupiter that are constructive. Okay. Um, and the first two could match the first stanza and the last two could match the last stanza. And that right there, would be your central idea. Okay. All right. And um, it's very, very, very um, effective. Again, it's it's just coding, you know. If you wanted to um, use color, um, that's something that I did with mine um, a couple of times. Um, I think a good way of demonstrating that would be uh, like using a, a talisman, right? Like one of the numbered talismans. Um, replace the numbers with letters, let each row be a stanza. So if we were using the Jupiter one, it would be one, two, three, four rows, four words per row, or you could just have four primary concepts even, um, per row. 
if you wanted to do uh like dates and timing one thing that i did with mine was took a color wheel mm -hmm. and divided it into 365 days and then made the first word the color of the day that i started and the last word the color of the day i wanted it to end um and if you're using if you're using that. talismans and you replace the numbers with letters and then you make a poem based off of that um you could draw the spirit sigil by coloring the appropriate word or letter right into the liturgy like it's right there like that is a spoken like talisman that you that you now have in your possession and it actually can call the spirit of that talisman by its very nature and I mean, you start mixing this with like movement and somatic um, components as well as, you know, like scent and things of that nature. Um, you can generate some very complex and very effective um, relationships there between ideas. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, explaining all that to us. Um, it was, it was, it's a lot to kind of wrap your yeah. brain around. But it does seem like a relatively, I mean, once you, once you break it down to the math and, and the, the, with the sample and the example that you showed, I think it makes sense in a way that is practical and something that we can put into our back pocket and start to use to kind of, uh, people are always asking me, how do I supercharge my magic? How do I make my magic work better? You know, this is the kind of technique that you pick up on, you know, and it's it's the kind of thing that that taps into like potentially unseen or unmapped harmonies and uh resonances at levels beyond a sort of like like you know there's probably something to what you just explained here that has to tie into the golden mean and all that weird stuff that people say that they understand that you don't really nobody really understands nobody really understands that but, stuff. but it's like it's like this invisible unseen world that we work with you know it works with us in ways it, it, it's like the way d got the uh the enochian system it's it's exactly the way someone like him would get a system like that you know and it's completely fitting you know, and the way that you received your system, it's very fitting for, for what the way your mind works and the way your experiences are. And it was able to, uh, based on based on where you're at with things and your interface with existence, to just go in and edit things at like the actual matrix level, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it really does break it down to, to binaries, right? And it's just like you said. Um, where, you know, you, you have these reflections of the absolute that show themselves in, in different ways. Um, in, in this particular instance, it, you, you have yourself as a reflection of the absolute and everything else. Um, and it, it makes for interesting times, I will tell you. It does indeed. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much. I would love to delve into some of what those interesting times are like at some point, but thanks a lot. I will talk to you again soon. Awesome. Have a great one, man. All right.